welcome back to another video and today we'll be working january 2022 question four and it says three functions f g and h are defined as we have f of x being 2x minus 1 g of x being 3x plus 2 and h of x being 5 x so that's 5 raised to the power of x i know it is kind of blurry but it is 5 raised to the power of x. And part A says find the value of f of a half. So what this means is that wherever in the f of x function that you see x, you will replace it with the number a half. So f of a half. So let's get this f of a half is equal to so it will be two now we see x so we'll replace that x with a half minus one and then we just solve the equation it becomes like a regular let's say algebraic x um equation so f of a half is equal to two times a half will be one and that will be one minus one and therefore f of a half is equal to zero. So our answer f of a half, f of a half is equal to zero. So what this is basically saying is that when x is equal to a half, our y value is zero. Now we have h of zero. So what this means is that anywhere in our h of x expression that we see x, we will replace it with the number zero. So our expression for h of x, let me just rewrite that one here. So h of x is equal to five raised to the power of x. So where we see x, you will replace it with zero. Now, if you remember, I think that was taught in algebra, if my memory serves me correctly. It looks at law of indices and any number raised to the power of zero is one. So that is what we know from jumpstart. So without even working this one, I could see what the answer is, a so 5 raised to the power of 0 because our x is there, so we replace the x with 0. And what we know is that any number raised to the power of 0 will be 1. So therefore, 5 raised to the power of 0 would be equal to 1. Now, going on to our next question, it is g square negative 3. So what this is telling us, a g square, g square of negative 3 is the same as gg negative 3. So what this is called is a compound function. So what it's saying is that everywhere in g of x that we see x, we will replace that x with the g of x function. But before doing that, what we'll do is to solve what g of negative 3 is. And that is what we will put in the g of x function. So first, I'm going to find g of negative 3. So remember, the g of x function stated that 3x plus 2. So it is 3 multiplied by x. So where I see x, I'm going to put a negative 3 plus 2. So what this will give me is... 3 times a negative 3, that will give me negative 9 plus 2, and therefore g of negative 3 is equal to a negative 7. It is now this negative 7 that I am going to put back into my g of x function. So let me just rewrite the g of x function so that you're reminded of it. So g of x is equal to 3x plus 2. So now, wherever in g of x, now that I see x, I'm going to put negative 7. So therefore, g, g of negative 3, which g of negative 3 is 7, it will be equal to 3 multiplied by negative 7 plus 2. So g, g of negative 3 is equal to 3 times negative 7 is negative 21 plus 2. And now what we'll have here 
gg sorry gg of negative three is equal to this would be negative 19 and that would be our answer so all we're doing is wherever in g of x we were replacing with the g of negative three working which we got to be negative seven no we're now at part b and it says find g of x given your answer in its smallest form so what i'm going to do is to first rewrite the functions since we're we've passed them so that you can be reminded so i'm first going to write So g of x was g of x was equal to 3x plus 2 and f of x so let me look back f of x was equal to 2x minus 1 okay so another composite function so what this is saying is that everywhere in g of x so everywhere in g of x that i see x i will replace it with the f of x function so i'm putting this one into this so it's like let's call it an advanced form of substitution so therefore g f of x is equal to so my g of x function is g and now that i see x i will replace it with the f of x function which is 2x minus 1 and then continue back with the g of x function which the only term that remain is plus two and i will now go ahead and simplify this so we'll say three times two x that will give us six x a distributive law here and three times negative one that will give us a minus three plus two so therefore g f of x is equal to six x then we have minus three plus two and that will leave us with minus one and this is our final answer so g f of x is equal to six equal to six x minus one So now we're on to part C1 and it says G, G inverse of X. So G of X, writing back our G of X function, G of X is equal to 3X plus 2. What we know is that G of X is the same as Y if you're looking at it from a graph perspective. So therefore, we're going to change our g of x to y. So y is equal to 3x plus 2. What we're going to do next is to make x the subject of the equation. So we're going to have this 2 is adding here. So when it comes across equal sign, it becomes negative. Or in other case, we're subtracting 2 from both sides of the equation and now that three it is multiplying so when it goes across operation becomes opposite so we'll now be dividing so what we'll have is y minus two divided by three or it's the same as we're dividing both sides of the equation by three at this point x is now the subject of the formula so what we're going to do next is now interchange the y with x and vice versa so wherever there is x we will replace it with y and wherever there is y we will replace it with x so what we'll have is y is equal to x minus 2 being divided by 3 and this is our answer so we now have our no it's g inverse 
of x is equal to x minus 2 being divided by 3. And that is our answer. So g inverse of x is x minus 2 being divided by 3. And guys, there are other ways that you can work these questions. This is just one method or one solution that I'm providing. But your teacher might teach you another way or you might be looking at a textbook and it might teach you another way. You might be looking at a video and you might be explaining it another way. But at the end of the day, all the answers will come back to be the same. Part two now says, hence or otherwise determine the value of x when g inverse of x is equal to four. So g inverse of x is equal to four. So therefore, using this g inverse of x that we have, what we'll have is four is equal to x minus two being divided by three. So basically we're solving for x. So what we're first going to do is this three is dividing here. So when it comes across, it will be multiplying or we're multiplying both sides of the equation by three. So what we'll have three times four is equal to x minus two. So three times four, that will give us 12. So what we will have is 12 is equal to x minus 2. 12 is equal to x minus 2. So therefore, this x, this, it is subtracting with the 2. So we're removing the 2. So we're basically adding 2 to both sides of the equation. So it is 12 plus 2 is equal to x. And what we'll have is 14 is equal to x. And that is our final answer. So therefore, x is equal to 14 when g inverse of x is equal to 4. So thank you for watching and we will see you in another video.